Hey guys, how y'all doing? My name is Derek Duga and I am a service tech here at Primo RV. Uh, I'm very happy today to tell y'all about the Transcend. This is the new line by Grand Design. This one is the 28 MKS. Um, so we're gonna do a walk around on this one today. So this particular unit does come with electric tongue jack. Uh, on the front, you're gonna have a light. Button on the side is just gonna be your up and down to help you take it on and off your truck and help you level it. Um, for some reason, if it doesn't work, most of these is gonna have an inline fuse. If you follow the line down, right here, you're gonna have a 30 amp fuse. It's just a flat 30 amp. So check that, and a lot of times that fixes the problem on here. If you cannot figure out what is wrong and you need to get it on and off your truck, you're gonna pull this rubber grommet off. This handle will be in your front compartment of your camper. You just put that here and now you can crank it manually to take it on or off your truck. Right behind your jack, you're gonna have your LP bottles. Um, that's gonna run the gas side. On, right here, you're gonna see you're gonna have a regulator, so you do have a crossover. Right now, it's pointing on this bottle. So you have this bottle open. Here, it's clear. When this flips to red, that's telling you that it's empty. So what you're gonna wanna do is close the bottle. You're gonna flip it over to the other one, turn this bottle on, now you're up and running again. Behind the LP bottles is where your battery is gonna be located. So that's gonna run the 12 volt side. Um, if you're gonna be plugged in, make sure this is not maintenance free. So every couple of months, you're gonna to wanna to pull these caps, make sure you have water and use distilled water only. So with the same handle that you would use on the front jack manually, that's what's gonna work your stabilizer jacks. Now, and you're just turning, they'll come down. Now these jacks are only stabilizer jacks. So if you get to the spot where you're camping and you are off level, front to back is very easy. You use your tongue jack, your electric jack, get yourself level. If it's off left to right, what you're gonna have to do is actually put blocks behind the tires and you're gonna have to roll the camp up on the blocks. Once you're level, now you can come down with these, put enough tension to stop the trailer from rocking. This is only to stabilize the camper. So right next to the hot water heater, this right here, this is where you're gonna fill up your fresh water tank. So if you're going dry camping uh, on a long trip and you need to use water inside the unit, you would fill this up with water, put on your water pump, and you can use the water as you need it. Straight underneath, right here, you're gonna have a big white pool. That's how you're gonna drain the fresh water tank. So you pull that handle and now your tank's empty. Right next to it is the hot water heater. Um, on this particular model, good thing about it is you have a plastic plug, so you won't have an anode. Good thing about that is that's, a, that's an aluminum tank. So with an aluminum tank, there's no need to check your anode to see if you need to change it. Um, the only reason you would drain it is maybe once a year just drain it to let out the trash or if you're going to winterize it, you're going to want to drain it. This particular model is a gas and electric, uh, so for further information, see our how-to video on hot water heaters. So here we are in the little outdoor kitchen. You're gonna have a two burner stove and a little electric ice box. Uh, your stove, underneath the cabinet, you're gonna have a hose that's clipped. You'll pull it down. Right here where the tag's at is where your quick connect's gonna be. You'll plug that stove in there. There is a valve. You're gonna turn the valve on to let the gas in. Once that happens, it locks you in. You have to turn the valve off to get the line off. It's a little safety feature, so it's really nice. Once you're done, your line goes right back underneath and you're ready to go. So the last thing you're gonna do with your handle is you're gonna have a little hole that's underneath your burner. Straight across, you're gonna have a nut on the frame. You're gonna take this, go straight through, put it on that nut. What that does, it allows you to close the living room slide if something were to ever happen and it won't come in. So you can still leave. Put it on, you're gonna turn it, you'll crank it in. They put it on this side, that way you don't smash yourself while you're underneath the slide. Right next to the outdoor kitchen, this is where you're gonna find the exhaust for your heater. So in the winter time when you're running your propane heater, make sure you don't put anything in front of this. This is gonna get really hot, uh, so it will melt it. Another important thing I see a lot of times is the kids like to come in front of it and warm up. Just remember this is carbon monoxide, so it is bad for them to breathe. On the back side is where your ladder is located. It's another great feature that the Transend by Grand Design is doing. Not a lot of bumper pulls has the ladder. 
Uh, you're gonna have 300 pound max. You can get on top your roof, check everything. On the very back, uh, this hose is gonna be located in your front compartment. On the back side, you have a spray port, so you'll just hook this up, and it will give you cold water on the back side. It won't have hot, but you will have cold. Here on the bumper is where your spare tire is located. On top, you are backup camera ready, so if you wanted one, we can install one for you. Here is your icebox breather. So you have a little hose coming out here. If you have water coming out here any time, that's okay. That's normal. It's your icebox defrosting, so you have nothing to worry about. Here on the back is where your power card is going to be located. Uh, this model is 50 amp. So if you got a spot that only has a 30, make sure you get the adapter that goes from the 30 to the 50. On this model, you're going to have two sewer hookups. Uh, this one's going to be on the back, right in front of your back jack. That's going to be a gray pool. That's going to be your galley, which is the same. Here located in front of your axles is where your other sewer hose is going to be connected. So here you're going to have a gray and your black pool. So it'd be up to you if you'd want to make a Y to where they both can both be connected at one time or if you're just going to use one on the main and have to switch it. So remember, your gray pools can be opened all weekend. You can let them drain. You never want the black tank dry. You always want to leave about four gallons in the tank. Right next to your pools, you're going to see two valves. That is your low point drains. So for winterizing, you would open those up and that would drain all the lines in your camper. Right here is what you're going to have a black tank flush. Uh, so when you're done camping, what you're going to want to do is pull all your valves, your black tank, which is your toilet. You're going to keep the valve open. You're going to take the hose from the fresh water, which I'll show you where that's at. You're going to hook it up to here. When you turn it on, the pressure is going to make the wand spin inside the black tank and it's going to wash out your tank really clean. So here located in the front compartment, this is where all your hookups are going to be. You're going to run your hoses in through the floor, which will allow you to close the door if it's raining or anything. Right here is where you're going to hook up your hose for the city water. This valve, which is set now, is on city water. You can also fill your fresh water tank from this side. So the other side will be a gravity fed. This will be from the city water. You could do it either way. Here is your battery disconnect, so if you're going to save this camper for a while and not plug it, you can turn this off, and what that does, it saves your battery. Here you have satellite connections and cable connections. Right next to it, 110 plugs. Here, next to the compartment, we have a little solar prep. So if you did a lot of dry camping, uh, you could buy a solar panel, you would plug it in, and what that does is keep your battery charged. So here we are inside the unit. Uh, we are in the master bedroom. If you decide that you want to put a TV, just make sure you stay center of this sticker. That's where your back is. You're going to be fine. Straight up is your connections. Here on the roof over the bed, that's your carbon monoxide sensor. So that's ran by 9 volt. You're going to want to check and make sure you have battery. Next to it, you have a vent. You can open it on the hot days, let the air out. On the other side of the bed, you're going to notice you're going to have plugs on both sides, 110 plugs. You also have USB ports on the right side. So here in the transit, one th another thing that I like is they're putting a full-size queen, so you have a true 60 by 80 mattress in here. Also underneath, you have a good bit of storage. Also here in the bedroom, on the bottom of the wardrobe, that's where your fuses and your break is located. Everything's labeled is what it is. Fuses on the right side. One good thing about the new ones is this little window, if you see a red light glowing, that tells you which fuse is burnt. No more guessing. Another great feature about the transit here in the bathroom, look how big the shower is. Um, normally don't put this size in a bumper pool. Plenty, plenty room in here. GFI is going to be set up in the bathroom here. This GFI is going to run your outside plugs, so if any of your 110 plugs on the outside doesn't work, this is where you're going to reset them. So if your inside plugs don't work, uh, your 110s, they have a built-in GFI on the breaker panel that I just showed you that was located underneath the wardrobe, you would reset those there. So here in the hallway, this will be your smoke detector. That's also going to run off a 9 volt. Straight down here, this is going to be your propane sniffer. That is going to be wired directly to your battery, so you always have juice as long as your 12-volt battery is good, 
and right next to the door is going to be your fire extinguisher. So here in the kitchen, uh, your microwave is going to work simply just like the one in your house. Your stove, you're just going to pick the burner you want and this one does have a spark. It will light the top. Your oven is still manual so you're going to open it, you're going to light underneath your pilot, put it on pilot, press and hold it and it will light. Here we are at the ice box. You're gonna have three sets of buttons. The first one is simply just to turn your ice box on and off. The auto button, as long as you're on auto and plugged in, your electric is gonna, it's gonna be running on electric. Now this one will switch from gas. So when you get there, if you put a bottle on while you're plugged, if the electricity goes out while you're camping, it will automatically switch to gas for you. And electric's always first. So if the electricity comes back on, it will switch back to electric. But if you want to run on just gas, all you're going to do is press this button, put on a bottle, and now you're running strictly gas. And this here is just your temperature from 1 to 5 being coldest. The dinette table uh, does come down to make a bed so you can sleep here. Recline is next to it. And then the sofa here, it's a full-size sofa so you can actually sleep two grown-ups. So if you're at a campground or you're somewhere where there's no cable and you need to use the antenna for the TV, what you're gonna do is you're gonna crank this reel till it stops, that means your antenna's all the way up. Then you're gonna pull this down and you're gonna turn the antenna till you catch the best reception. You'll camp. Whenever you're done, you're gonna wanna make sure that you turn this back and line up these two arrows and then crank it down because what it does, it sits in the saddle. So if you're not lined up, it will, won't be sitting straight on your roof. On the wall here, located underneath your monitor panel, that's gonna be your air condition and your heater thermostat. All you wanna do is you're gonna put it on cool, you wanna run on auto, set your temperature. If you're gonna run your heater, remember that is propane, so you need to put on a bottle, put it on heat, and now you're up and running. Here's your monitor panel. This here is gonna bring your slide in and out. This will be your on and in and out. This one here will be your inside lights on the middle run. This is your exterior lights for the outside. This will be your water pump. Your hot water heater, you can run it from the inside. So this will be your electric side and this will be your gas side. On top will be your gauges. So that's your battery, fresh water, black, gray one and gray two. So I would like to thank you for watching and congratulations on the purchase of your new Transin and welcome to the Primo family.